and uh, thanks for the invitation uh, to present my work in this uh, nice series of seminars. Uh, I will talk about uh, macrocarrier type evolution. I will, my main uh, goal is to show you what happens when cells are starting from some uh, uh, certain uh, set of chromosomes, uh, what is termed uh, carrier type. So carrier type for those that are not familiar with this uh, biological language, carrier type means uh, uh, the set of chromosomes and how this set of chromosomes changes in time due to different uh, reasons, uh, due to different type of missegregations, such as uh, single chromosome missegregations, multipolar divisions, or whole genome duplication. So uh, just to see what happens during cell divisions, uh, so this slide starts to depict two different cases. One case is what happens when uh, healthy cells are dividing. Uh, they are uh, they are just duplicated their chromosomes and they divide this chromosome content such that each, each daughter cells uh, is getting uh, the the same uh, chromosome content, which means the same uh, DNA content uh, is going there. However, it's not always the case, and in in certain uh, diseases such as uh, tumors, uh, there there are also incorrect cell divisions, and uh, these missegregations that is depicted here lead to uh, unequal uh, cell divisions, which means that uh, the cell will not the, the daughter cells will not inheriting the same uh, uh, chromosome content. Uh, as the mother cell. So in this uh, particular case, one cell is gaining one chromosome and the other one is losing one chromosome. Uh, first, let me uh, introduce mathematical language here. For this mathematical language, I put the, this uh, image of the, of, the, of the chromosome content. So for those that are not familiar with the uh, uh, biology, each chromosome, such as here, chromosome one has two copies. That chromosome two has two copies, chromosome three has two copies, and so on. And uh, this situation is here denoted with this vector, where this first number represents uh, two copies of chromosome one, and so on. And uh, uh, please note that in this mathematical notation, I can uh, only recognize if some cells are gaining or losing uh, in the entire chromosome. So the, the, only the whole chromosome misaggregations will be described here. Uh, why this is important? Because sometimes uh, cells are reaching really uh, very bad karyotypes, such as this uh, karyotype with really uh, different copy numbers for each of these chromosomes, which is uh, termed anoplic karyotype. And uh, here in this particular case, uh, it is represented by this vector where this number three represents these three copies of chromosome one and so on. You already uh, here can actually see that uh, there is uh, pretty much variability in this anoplid karyotypes. And uh, the first question actually I will uh, here uh, ask is uh, how many different karyotypes uh, can exist? And this depends on something what uh, what we start uh, as a as a op as an option. So it strongly depends on how many of copies uh, uh, each chromosome can have. So for instance, if each chromosome can vary from one to five copies, which is pretty conservative estimate, uh, as you could see it uh, in the uh, previous slide, uh, there is uh, five to twenty three. Uh, combinations, which is which is actually twelve quadrillions of combinations, and uh, if you know that we are dealing uh, with large number of cells in human bodies, such as uh, thirty seven uh, trillions, we are really dealing with a pretty big number of these uh, these combinations and these cells, and it's hard actually to analyze this from any perspective, theoretical or experimental. Just uh, for instance, uh, if you want to get idea, these 12 quadrillions, uh, with uh, how, how big is this number? It is comparable with the uh, with grain, number of grain, uh, grains uh, of weed uh, of the entire globe, global, uh, global production. So it's really, really huge number. And uh, the question is, how to explore the, the system because uh, there should be, it's, to a certain extent, 
something that that we can learn from such systems. And for that reason, we need to narrow down a number of unknowns, but also what we need to do, we need to uh, identify dominant processes by developing adequate computational model and also by comparing uh, these uh, uh, results with uh, uh, with experimental observed carrot evolution. Uh, just to, I need to emphasize uh, these are some of theories that are done so far, and uh, they are not substantially different for our theory. So they are also taking into account many many important points that we also have in our in our model. Anyway, what is the key uh, novelty here is this uh, so-called macrocarrot concept. And what uh, what was the aim of this macrocarrot concept is uh, to uh, to uh, fulfill all these aims here that are stated, mainly to recognize how uh, if the cell is uh, deployed or close to deployed or it is very unemployed cells. And uh, if you check here, uh, what you can see uh, if you see this uh, these two copies of each chromosome 53 times, you can actually write this in a different manner. You can say we have zero copies of chromosome one, which is uh, which is shown here, 23 uh, chromosomes with two copies, zero co chromosomes with three copies, and so on. And we, what we call macrocaryotype actually is the vector that is shown here. Obviously, the dimension reduces. But if you check uh, how this relates to uh, to different unemployed cells, for instance, this one with the 46 chromosomes, you can appreciate that 46 and 46 are the same numbers, but this is unemployed cells as is wrong here. And in the macrocaryotype uh, approach, we can actually recognize that this is also unemployed cells. Of course, the information that is lost here is which chromosomes are uh, actually appearing in more than one focus. However, however uh, all what we need is actually here, and we can actually just uh, just uh, extend this uh, uh, this space by adding maybe something that is related to some specific protein, some specific chromosomes by extending a bit this space. However, what is uh, nicely uh, nice here in this uh, macrocarrot approach is how much the space is reduced. So instead of dealing with this number of combinations, that is 12 quadrillions, we are now uh, reduced to the system with uh, 280,000 combinations, which is now to actually calculate these numbers. Just to, for your information, if you're not familiar with, uh, with simulations, uh, you cannot uh, calculate all these uh, karyotypes even in a computer. Uh, not <laughs> so it's so so big number. The other advantage of this macro carrot approach is this graphical represent representation of results. Here I will not uh, explain uh, how uh, it helps me, but uh, later in, the, in in this talk you will see uh, all advantages of this graphical representation. So what we are doing in, in our model, in our model we are doing both uh, this. Uh, uh, rate equation where actually we can describe in the mean field of uh, model what happens with the uh, with karyotypes where uh, we calculate how number of cells of certain karyotype changes in time so this model includes cell division correct cell division apoptosis which means uh, cell death uh, bisegregation but misegregation Con, uh, it has negative contribution if you are losing uh, some karyotype content, but you can also have a positive uh, positive contribution from misegregations, such as this one, where uh, by losing one chromosome, actually you are going to initial karyotype. And if you do all this systematically, then you will get the, the model for karyotype evolution. I will later also introduce other type of misegregations, such as multipolar spindles and uh, uh, and the whole genome duplication. So uh, what happens in experiments? In experiments, uh, there is this nice experiment where actually our collaborators 
are exploring what happens with the pre-malignant state of colorectal cancer. So they're dealing this pre with pre-tumor pre cells and uh, they evolve these cells in a way that they grow they and uh, then passage them. What means passage them? They grow and then they are, uh, when they cover practically the entire carousel, then actually they uh, extract just uh, uh, one sixth of these cells and grow again, and uh, and each time when they uh, when they actually extract these uh, cells, that that's something what they call passage. Uh, and uh, here is typically how many passage numbers they have in their experiments. This passage this passaging also helps them because they can later uh, use these cells that are not uh, evolved anymore for karyotype sequencing, and this is sequencing data. Uh, typically, people are not familiar with the sequencing data, but this is how this looks like. So just pay attention what you need to, to read here. This line, this very thin line, represents uh, chromosome content of a single cell, and the color denotes copy numbers of each particular chromosome. For instance, you can see green uh, here uh, above this number one, this means that that number chromosome, chromosome one has two copies and so on until chromosome 20, which is red, which means it has three copies and so on. So this is how one needs to read this sequencing data. Of course, they uh, they did sequence their initial passages, but they also they evolved this, uh, this system and they th then you can see how these cells uh, how the chromosome contact changes in these cells. Uh, apart from chromosome 18, which is this red bar here, the rest of these karyotypes is also almost unchanged, whereas this chromosome uh, 18, this red, red uh, bar, uh, is growing, which means that number of cells containing three copies starts to dominate over cells that has that contain two copies. If we plot only uh, these cells that are having three copies of chromosome 18, then you can see how it grows in time. Uh, of course, this was a uh, first challenge to our model because this is nice, simple uh, experimental message. And uh, we start, we decided to simulate this situation with a very, very, very simple model where there is no more chromosomes than one. So we have only one chromosome, which can has either two or three copies. Of course, this seems naive model, but actually it's very powerful model because one can solve this analytically. And here is this uh, solution of this model, which can then be used for uh, comparison with the experimental data. Of course, when you have so uh, very little number of fitting parameters, uh, one can also do fitting, and this is the fitted curve, and uh, it's really nice fits the experimental data. So uh, what we learned from this simple model is uh, from the input parameters, we know that uh, cells divides every 1.3 days for these initial karyotypes, however, these cells with the gain of chromosome 18, uh, which, uh, which are starting dominating in the population, they should divide faster and they divide in our theory with the one point, every 1.1 day, which means uh, the reason for this uh, change in karyotype content is the, uh, this faster proliferation of this particular karyotype. Also, what we uh, could uh, estimate is this sin. Uh, so sin is uh, probability for miscegenation per a single cell. Now we try to solve the model with very same parameters, and we are uh, nicely reproducing this shape with the full model. However, we cannot reproduce the the observed uh, karyotypes in this initial or in this final time. For instance, you can check what happens with chromosome 20. And chromosome 20 has three copies uh, in almost 90%, uh, in almost 100% of cells, or all cells contain three copies of chromosome 
uh, 20. However, uh, the chromosome 20 actually uh, loses uh, three copies and actually uh, it goes down. Obviously, we didn't reproduce uh, the rest of the karyotypes, so we could only explain what happens with this chromosome 18, but we didn't, we were not able to reproduce the entire karyotypes. And in order to explain what happens in this particular, in this, uh, the other, uh, with the other uh, chromosomes, actually we introduce additional constraint in the model where we say all other karyotypes uh, are dividing slower as compared to our starting carrier type. Once when we put this, we were able to explain the, the entire experiment, which means we were able to explain what happens with chromosome 18, as well as what happens uh, with the other chromosomes in the system. Of course, uh, this, uh, this is a theoretical uh, prediction. And so far, we only can say yes, uh, uh, either uh, cells are dividing in a different manner, means divides faster or slower, or alternatively, they can actually undergo apoptosis in a chromosome-dependent manner, and uh, this is something what uh, theory cannot answer. Uh, just to see what all these results mean in one stochastic simulation, I, I really like the simulation where one can see that uh, the different uh, these missegregations occur, but even though they occur, uh, the chromosomes are, uh, all other chromosomes are here uh, keeping two copies, whereas the chromosome 18 is going from this uh, green to the, uh, to the red, which means is growing from two to three copies. Of course, this was one type of cells, but cells are not always behaving in this manner. So let's go back to experiments and see what, what else they, uh, they found there. As you can see from this sequencing data, karyotypes are not as simple as I have shown before. Before you can see that almost the entire, uh, this uh, plot was green, but here you can see three copies of chromosome two, three copies of chromosome three and so on. So the entire mess. Here I will show you also the, uh, the, the advantages of using macrokaryotype representation of the sequencing data, where uh, in this macrokaryotype representation, uh, this point here uh, denotes how many of cells actually contains 23 copies of chromosome two. So this is the schematic representation. This point here, we are denoting how many of cells are containing uh, uh, 23 copies of chromosome three and so on. And of course, here, this middle part uh, are the cells with the high aneuploidy, but if you're getting closer to this diagonal, then actually cells are either having two or three copies. So it's pretty informative, this diagram, and uh, it's much easier for reading uh, than this type of diagram. Of course, uh, as I already mentioned, this does not contain complete information about uh, karyotype. Uh, so uh, the only the only correct manner to show the karyotypes is to show in parallel both uh, macro karyotype uh, sequencing and this uh, typical representation of the sequencing data. So what happens when uh, when the time is going on? So what happens uh, when these cells evolve? This was the first uh, passage. Then uh, you can see the starting point, but uh, later in time, in passage 11, the, 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 the majority of cells going here towards uh, diploids. And if you're going more and more in time, we are actually getting closer and closer to diploids. Even though uh, here, as you can see, we are still far from a real diploid. So this is some some kind of near deployed uh, situation. Of course, we wanted to understand what happens here, uh, hap happens here from the theoretical perspective. Uh, so our idea was to explain how to start from karyotypes uh, from this starting point and to end here at this point uh, uh, in a theory. And we decided to do simulations where this is a representation of the starting point 
in theory, we start with homo very homogeneous situation and let all cells divide with equal parameters, which means the probability for cell misaggregation, uh, cell division, everything has uh, very same uh, value. And uh, check what happens in this uh, very simple theoretical case. And uh, if you use sin of 5%, uh, we can see that if we go from this starting point, that everything shifts a bit uh, in the wrong direction, but also spreads. So it's not completely clear whether, whether this is good or bad. But we decided, because it wasn't fast enough, we, we decided to enlarge the scene to 50%. And if we go to 50%, it's quite clear that if we start from this starting point, we will end here in something what is completely far from experimental observation. Of course, we need to do something here. We decided to somehow uh, convince cells that are actually better for them to have uh, uh, to don't have monosomies or pentasomies. So we we just put a disadvantage for cells that have already one monosomy or one pentasomy. And, uh, and uh, with this uh, pretty uh, simple uh, assumption, uh, our cells, our karyotypes are getting closer to what is ex observing experiments. So cells are moving from the starting point to the experimental point. However, if you compare the, this, what represents theoretical uh, sequence and this experimental sequence, it's quite obvious that we are far, uh, still far from understanding what happens in this system. Let's see once again what happens in this system. And we can see that, so this is like our, the last passage that we have in experiments so far, and we can, uh, uh, we can actually see here four dominating karyotypes that are here in circle. And uh, we decided actually to see how many of these dominating karyotypes we have in, uh, in this sequencing data. And if we go uh, through all passages uh, that, uh, that contain this, uh, that contain this, uh, exp uh, this uh, sequencing, uh, we could see that something like this one, which appears already at passage 11, uh, is, uh, is losing either chromosome 2, chromosome 8, or chromosome 12. And then we are getting these, uh, these dominating karyotypes. Again, here you can maybe see that this one is losing chromosome 12. This one is losing chromosome 2 or 8, and this one is losing chromosome 12. And uh, just by single chromosome misrigation, we are going from this, uh, this one that appears already at passage 11 until this karyotype that appears at last two passages. So it is quite, uh, quite clear that these karyotypes are evolving by losing single chromosomes from this uh, initial karyotype until this final karyotype. Also note that there is very few uh, karyotypes here. All neighboring karyotypes actually are not present. And uh, uh, there is also a high homogeneity of all these uh, karyotypes. Now I will uh, try to explain this uh, in, in the theory. Uh, by but for explaining this in theory, now I will make uh, a stronger uh, assumption. First, we know that cells, as they are evolving from more uh, higher aneuploid towards uh, near diploid cells, they are decreasing their sin rate. So uh, the sin rate changes uh, from 27 until 18 in this uh, uh, in this uh, theoretical calculation. We also decided to uh, to simulate just this tree with some additional branches. We arbitrarily put these branches because it's completely unclear how many branches exist in, in this, uh, this system. And very important thing, 
we have uh, a strong apoptosis or very slow proliferation. So look at here how many of cells one needs to uh, to eliminate from the evolution. All these cells are either proliferating much slower or they are undergoing apoptosis. So out of more than uh, 50 different karyotypes, only these three karyotypes here are actually existing. Of course, if we put this assumption here and do stochastic simulation, we are getting something what is closer, much closer to experiments. This is uh, still a uh, work in progress. So I can answer some, some questions here, but I cannot say that we completely understand the entire parameter space. Of course, there is a third set of experiments that are getting even more dramatic. In this case, uh, the, the initial passage was almost homogeneous with only few uh, few gains of these chromosomes. However, at a certain moment, there was a really dramatic uh, change from very uh, homogeneous to something that is highly unopulate. And this is this change. Uh, we don't know what happens there, but we have two uh, plausible explanations. One is that there was just a single multipolar event, or maybe that the, there was a whole genome duplication that was followed by multipolar, multipolar spin -ball. For instance, uh, if we model multipolar spindles like these tetrapoid, uh, tetrapolar spindles of tetrapoid cells and say that, uh, that uh, half of this uh, spindle, this very regular spindle, goes to daughter cells, uh, then we will get something for chromosome content. And uh, this is really, really a very theoretical assumption. We don't know exactly what happens there, but if we put this assumption only after one, uh, one uh, cell division of this type, actually we are getting this uh, prediction, which is pretty much similar uh, to the experimentally observed karyotypes in these uh, experiments with this dramatic change in the karyotype content. So here uh, I will uh, finish my talk. First, I will just uh, remind you what, what are the main messages. One is advantages that brings this macro karyotype model, you could see that it is good from really, really good tool from a uh, calculation point of view, but also from uh, showing uh, experimental data and theoretical data as well. Uh, then we could see uh, how the cell proliferation together with the, with the selection due to, uh, due to uh, difference in, uh, uh, in uh, cell division in proliferation, actually uh, can explain this uh, appearance of chromosome 18, then we see that very strong selection was required for understanding this type of uh, highly unemployed uh, situations. And finally, here at, at the previous slide, I have shown that uh, by using multiple spindles, we can explain what happens uh, during dramatic change from uh, something near deployed towards uh, very, very undeployed uh, carrier types. Here, I would like to talk, uh, thanks my collaborators. Obviously, a uh, big thanks goes to Lucia. Uh, she did all theoretical calculations I mentioned here. Also, I would like to give a big thanks to uh, Thomas from the COPS lab, because all these nice experiments are done uh, by uh, Thomas, also with help uh, from that technician. And here I would like to uh, thank uh, all these that helped me working my science, which means all these fundings, but also you for your attention. Um, let's thank Dinas for uh, the wonderful talk. Uh, so do we have any questions in the chat? Uh, let's, while waiting for questions to be typed in the chats, I, I do have one question, uh, Ninat. Um, so as far as I understand uh, this, uh, you know, in your macro karyotype model, 
sometimes you designate uh, different, you know, uh, differential uh, birth rates or you selective advantage for specific hair types. So for example, the, the one with the uh, amplification of chromosome 18. So I guess you have some experimental evidence, which one uh, you, you want to, uh, you know, kind of select out for that. Uh, but generally speaking, just for the all the other chromosomes, do we know how much uh, sort of uh, fitness advantage uh, does the amplification of individual uh, chromosomes uh, bring? Or is it, you know, or in other words, I'm asking like how how good is an exam uh, is the assumption that all the other uh, karyotypes are born equally? <laughs> Yeah, okay. Uh, thanks, that's a great question. And uh, uh, wh why we are using macrokaryotype here? So we are using actually kind of hybrid macrokaryotype for this particular example, where actually we say chromosome 18, we will follow separately. So we know this particular chromosome, the cell has a certain, uh, the, the cell uh, has two or three copies of chromosome 18 or four copies of eight, chromosome 18. And for the remaining of chromosomes, we do not take care, of course. But uh, your question is, uh, are, we, are we sure that we don't see the difference when, uh, when we put something like that in the model? Uh, I would say uh, it's not, uh, so it's not that we can say, we don't see the difference between different, uh, different uh, karyotypes. Maybe there is a difference in different karyotypes. But as long as we don't have information about difference in the karyotypes, I don't want to model something that is not observed experimentally. Mm -hmm. Because if I would say, okay, chromosome one brings something new, I would need to put really many parameters, just unknown parameters here. I would need to have these parameters say something to the power meters, see what happens there, but eventually we have zero information on the difference between chromosome one and the other chromosomes. So it's, even though they are most likely different, I, 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 I bet they're different, maybe even substantially different, but we cannot actually see in such experiment any difference, and there is no point for me to, to do the model for something we don't see. Okay, that makes sense. Th that's the idea of this macrokaryotype, to okay. model something what we do see. Right. I also noticed that in uh, you know in some of the experimental results that you showed, like after many passages, sort of the end, uh, the end result, uh, certain uh, the, the, case, the case one, the case two, or the case three. Uh, I can't remember exactly, but some of the cases where I can see, you know, certain chromosomes like uh, seem to uh, tend to have, uh, you know, three copies. Certain chromosomes tend to have four copies. Uh, I mean, has has anybody done a statistics, you know, to and and, and know like, uh, you know, in these uh, uh, in these cancer cell development? Uh, yes. Yes. I mean, yes. Individual yes. chromosomes, they, they have preference in uh, a certain state? Yes, I, I didn't put here the slide, but there are, it's known which chromosomes are there. Uh, uh, so like, uh, like he, uh, it's not, it's not written, sorry. So is it here? No, it's not written here as well, but here, for instance, uh, I, I think some of these chromosomes are present in uh, in tumor cells uh, predominantly. So there are chromosomes that are present. I think also these chromosome twelve and thirteen uh, are present in chromos in uh, in tumor karyotypes. So it's uh, it's most likely that there is a certain reason why these karyotypes, these particular not karyotypes, these particular chromosomes are here uh, appearing in larger copy numbers. Mm -hmm. So the, most likely there is a biological reason for this. Mm -hmm. But there is one big but. There are some uh, cases where only one of these chromosomes is present or in combination with two chromosomes. Uh, but uh, 
it's different from different uh, patient. It's a different carrier type. So it's it's huge variability from patient to patient. Okay. It's not that, that all patients have very same very same uh, unemployedies. They are they can be substantially different. I see. So th this is this my answer is. Uh, it's a. Uh, it's uh, there are some dominating chromosomes that that, uh, that are dominant in these uh, in these cases. There are four of them, but uh, it's not just uh, uh, like zero and one information. So right. you can have both with and without these uh, larger copy numbers or or smaller copy numbers. It's it's also possible to have some uh, monosomies. Nice. I, I think it's really amazing that uh, you kind of uh, simplify this, you know, gazillions of, uh, of, of possibilities <laughs> in a very smart way to making it a handleable problem. So I uh, also like one small technical problem, like when you model the missegregation, chromosome missegregation, uh, do you take into account that I think certain, certain chromosomes are more likely to get missegregated than others? Yes. Yes, you are right. You are you are completely right. Uh, uh, typically, larger chromosomes has uh, larger misregulation uh, probabilities. We try to see uh, to which extent these changes our results, but uh, we didn't see a substantial a substantial contribution of this of the of the difference in a, uh, in a probability of, for, for higher or lower misregulation uh, rate. So it's it's uh, we we couldn't see something dramatic that comes from a difference in probability for larger or uh, smaller misregulation. Mm 